वेलकम टू द फोकस सीरीज आई एम डॉक्टर गोपाल कृष्ण जालवाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन एनस्तीशिया डिपार्टमेंट टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द ई फास्ट सो ई फास्ट स्टैंड्स फॉर द एक्सटेंडेड फोकस असेसमेंट विद सोनोग्राफी इन ट्रॉमा पेशेंट्स ई फास्ट इज वेरी सेंसिटिव एंड स्पेसिफिक डायग्नोस्टिक टूल टू लुक फॉर द इंट्राबडोमिनल फ्लूड कलेक्शन एंड pneumothorax in trauma patients in the e fast we do scanning at the pericardiac perihepatic perisplenic pelvic and anterior intercostal space areas if patient is e fast positive and hemodynamically unstable then there is a need of immediate intervention and if patient is hemodynamically stable then we can go for the further diagnostic testing in the e fast we use the low frequency curvilinear probe and the first view for that we have to scan is the pericardiac view so place your low frequency curvilinear probe just below the geoid process so now you can see this is a subcostal four chamber view and uh, uh, now i am going to freeze it so here you can see uh, this is the left ventricle this is the right ventricle this is left atrium this is a right atrium or this is a interventricular septum this is a mitral wall this is a tricuspid wall and this is a pericardium so in the e fast usually we look for the uh, pericardial effusion if uh, uh, pericardial effusion is present then you can see this and echoic blackening uh, just uh, around the pericardium place the low frequency curvilinear probe in a posterior axillary line in the 7th or 8th intercostal space and you will get this view when you place your low frequency curvilinear probe in 7th 8th intercostal space in posterior axillary line then first structure that you have to identify is the kidney uh, on ultrasound kidney is a bean shape structure here you, you can see and we know that kidney has two parts outer is the cortex and inner is the medulla on ultrasound cortex is a anechoic or slightly hypoechoic here you can see this is a cortex and medulla is a uh, slightly hyperechoic structure uh here this is a medulla so once you identify the kidney then you have to move your probe upward uh, to visualize the liver if uh, liver is not visible in that plane so liver looks like a slice of bread and gives a homogeneous appearance uh, so this is a liver and few blood vessels such as the hepatic vein portal vein or their tributaries can be visualized into the liver and just above the liver this is a diaphragm in the e fast there are three potential sites where we have to look for the intraabdominal fluid collection first one is the upper pole of the kidney and second one is the space between the liver and the kidney that is hepatorenal space and this is also known as a morrison pouch and third one is the just below the diaphragm if fluid is present uh, in on those sites then it is considered that e fast is positive and for the hemothorax or pleural effusion we have to look for the just above the diaphragm
when you place low frequency curvilinear probe in the left side in posterior axillary line in fifth or sixth intercostal space then you will see this sono anatomy as we see on the right side here also our first structure that we have to identify is the kidney as uh, i explained the kidney already in the right side of the view so here this is a bean shaped structure that is the kidney and this is a cortex and this is a medulla so just above the kidney you can see a homogeneous structure that is slightly hypoechoic when we compare to the liver uh, that is the spleen okay and just above the spleen you can see another a hyperechoic structure that is the diaphragm in the left upper quadrant you have to look for the fluid collection a space between the uh, spleen and the kidney here and just below the diaphragm here and for the hemothorax you have to look for the fluid collection just above the diaphragm if fluid is present on those side then it is considered that patient is e fast positive This is a normal lung sono anatomy. This, this is a skin subcutaneous tissue here, superior rib and inferior rib. The bony structure always gives a acoustic shadow in the ultrasonography. Here you can see the acoustic shadow of the ribs. And in between the ribs, these are the intercostal muscles. And uh, just below the intercostal muscles, here you can see a hyperechoic continuous line that is the pleura. In the normal lung ultrasonography, parietal and visceral pleura are not visible. We cannot differentiate the parietal and visceral pleura, but they slide against the each other in synchrony with the respiration. This is also known as a sliding sign, shimmering, or and so on a line. If sliding sign is present, then we can rule out the pneumothorax. And uh, if we outline the ribs and uh, pleura like this, then it gives the appearance of bat. So this is also known as a bat wing sign or bat sign. Uh, the importance of bat wing sign is that if we place the high frequency linear probe in a second intercostal space sometime, you can not visualize the both ribs and uh, pleura completely. So if uh, you are uh, seeing the bat wing sign then it means uh, you are at proper place and uh, that is better to elevation of the pleura and uh, just below the pleura there are few parallel lines these lines so these lines are the a lines these a lines are because of the air reverberation artifact
look for the is there any pneumothorax present or not so we have to place the low frequency carvinian probe between the second uh, or third intercostal space yeah. and then orientation marker should be cranial yeah. so you can see that uh, sliding sign is present so when you will apply the m mode then you will see this is a c show sign so it means if c show sign is present then there is a no pneumothorax another side so now you can see that this sliding sign is present and when we apply the m mode there is a c source shine is also present for the pelvic view we have to uh, place the low frequency curvilinear probe just above the pubic symphysis and uh, facing toward the urinary bladder and uh, look for the fluid collection in the retrovesical space here you can see a black anechoic structure that is the urinary bladder and uh, now i am going to rotate my probe in a sagittal orientation so in the e fast we have to look for the fluid in a retrovesical space 